80 million dollars out of the NIS to be invested overseas. And it's an article that takes up about two thirds of a page, more than, more than half a page. But they never say where this $80 million, where's where this $80 million going? You know, it says US $40 million overseas. You know, and, and as I said, in talking to people, if I were to tell somebody now that I, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to go overseas and study. Anybody that has the slightest interest in me would say we're, because what does overseas mean? Which country? What is it you're investing in? None of that is in the article. In the article, you just have a, a defense about we're required to diversify the fund, um, the recommendations are that we have to do some investment outside of Barbados. Nobody is saying that 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 isn't true, that it would be good to earn some money on the money that we, we put into the fund and, and, and to invest it sensibly. But all they have condescended to say to us, the public of Barbados, is that it going overseas? That's how like when people were sneaking out of Barbados back in the day when they didn't want anybody to know, they just said they're going overseas. They went everywhere, they're going to Canada, England, or America. So like, what's that about? So the blatant disrespect that was shown to Barbadians when that bill was sneaked into the house never circulated in the official Gazette until it reached the, the upper house. The same blatant disrespect continues and you know i i want to make the point that you know and you know people listening to me i guess you've heard people make this point over and over again no they did not say invested with whom and where no they did not they did not the, the page was just made up of a lot of um different comments from from recommendations so but i i, I mean i am a bit concerned about the number of people you have in Barbados who have received the best education possible. You know, we're, we're in 11 plus mode now with where people are going. So people are going off to schools, a lot of money will be spent on getting all the paraphernalia and all that. And that was done for all of us, you know, um, by whatever our parents could afford, but most people, probably everybody, when they um, were going into secondary school, parents will find the wherewithal to get the shoes and the bag and whatever and send us off. And now that we have been educated, there seems to be a, a large cadre of Barbadians who simply say, um, we well, can't do nothing about it. Um, I don't pay, I don't get caught up in them things, you know, and some of these people would be described as the brightest and best in, in our society in terms of how they were educated. Now, I don't know if they don't look at other countries when they're imbibing all that is coming from abroad. They would notice that you have um, nonprofit organizations that would be headed by a surgeon, but that person is only practicing medicine they're involved in some other nonprofit doing good for their country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so, so they're not thinking, oh, I'm educated, I'm a surgeon, no, like, I'm a top surgeon. And every now and again, I would just write a check. They actually said they get involved in charities. They make a difference to their country. So we have a whole set of people, well-educated, good jobs, income, nothing to be too much afraid of because even if they couldn't work here they could, they could probably work overseas and you know they're they're just going to work going to their nice house driving in their nice car and not contributing to the society in that way they're not standing up for the people who might be poorer than them who might be less well educated to me it is embarrassing i i actually feel embarrassed about the generation of people I represent who will not lift a hand 
but keep saying, well, then uh, that you could do both it. Where in right. the like if it is a, it, it, the, the, the asset of Barbados belong to us. And I'm just afraid, just as we sat back and we allowed crime to escalate without trying to look out for our young people and especially our young men to see what they needed um the, the same the same thing will happen to our country you had a country like venezuela for example which whenever it was described in the news before you used to talk about um the oil rich country of venezuela mm -hmm. and then it came to a point where the people didn't have anything to eat they were eating mangoes there was no food on the shelves so if barbadians think that that type of thing can't happen to us they have another thing coming. Barbados succeeds because of discipline. You know, I keep saying this is because of discipline. We don't have much, but what we have, we have to be good stewards of. And right now we're not being good stewards because the Auditor General pointed out this $24 million write-off. You have um, people like Crystal Howell and other people who talk about it. We talk about it for a couple of days and then we don't do anything else. We, we don't we don't say anything. $124 million is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money for a small nation. I, I we should we should be concerned. We, you know, and it 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 is like it is like a slap in the face. It is like if like if they consider us to be clowns because they put that article in the paper precisely on the day when they, they knew they were going to pass the NIS bills in, in the upper house. So basically they're saying, I don't give a what y'all think. Correct, correct. We're not, we not stopping, we're doing what we feel like. So I can tell you that we carry $18 million of your money abroad and don't ask us anything about it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, and and that's what what I mean. You know, I, I I this is this is the administration that says you know I care, and the people are having the people have a problem with the bill, and they they are you're you're right. On the day when it's going to set to the Senate, they put this out and have a white man telling us us to believe it. That's all. That's another part of the psychology of it. You know, we're going to and, and, and we're going to invest money overseas. Yeah. yeah. You know. Um. I, I just as well. Mm, can I just add something to this thing? Because I'm yeah. going to show you how chaotic this government is. This bill was not supposed to be debated today. They told all the people in the integrity group and everything else, oh, today is the day for the integrity and public life bill. Then they discovered somehow that they're not going to have enough senators to pass it. How I know this? Because Mr. Nigel Jones QC Deputy Clerk of Parliament sent a letter to the members of the Senate, and it says, Dear Honorable Senator, I'm instructed to inform you by the Honorable Leader of the Senate that a number of Honorable Senators will not be present for the 31st sitting of the Senate being held on Wednesday, August 9th, 2023 at 11 a.m. So they couldn't pass it because of that. And he goes on to say, Further, it is desire an intimation of the leader to introduce the debate in the National Insurance and Social Security Amendment Bill and the Pension Miscellaneous Provisions Bill 2023 in a cognate debate. Now, this is the claim we catch here. It says, Please note that notice of the Pension Miscellaneous Provisions Bill 2023 was given on Saturday, July 29th, 2023. It was inadvertently not read the first time at the last sitting, but will be done so next Wednesday. They may even read the bill a first time in the Senate. But they come in there and sneak it in today and do all the first, second, and third, everything at one time. As, as they've been doing chaotic, you know, for everything else. <laughs> this is how chaotic the Senate government. Everything about this now dealing with the their party administration is. They just do it as they like. And as I see the people on the there saying, and we don't give a well, they used to care. Remember this you said, may I care? Yeah. Now no, she's they... on the platform saying 
She doesn't give a give up. And agreeing with the crowd when the crowd shout out what she doesn't give. That was so gross. But she don't give up, uh, and that's what and that's that's what I'm looking at and said, who's she saying that to? Who who is she directing that to? You know, but but what do you the have anything? The, uh, the people of the country, Caswell. Do you have um, what do you know about uh, before Bulenet continue? Any any information because Miss um, Senator Cummings is saying that the nine million it's supposed to be nine point eight million based on the notes I have here um, that was taken in twenty twelve out of the NI. She said that that portion was was repaid, um, but Lynette is saying that there was a, a hundred and twenty million dollars um that um from the nis what do you know much about that well lenette said everything that i knew and she said a little bit more i really don't have the information because trust me when i hear um they should come and saying something and unless i have the facts in my own possession i don't um quote her trust me when i tell you that i don't yeah. quote her or i'm um, actually I believe anything she says unless I have the documents to prove it. I will have to see the documents. So she, 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 she says the 9.8 million. The truth is, I really had not heard of the 9.8 million till I, till I started to research it again. I always knew about the 60 million, Barbados 1.120 million. So um, I I don't know you know if you if you actually Google it if you go and you research it you would see that that's what everybody was saying I don't see how it could suddenly be reduced to nine point eight million but you see there there are a lot of things that are being done um, the, there's a lot of psychology you know being worked out. No, Rodden Adams was chosen specifically to be the to be the face of that newspaper article because he's the deputy chairman. You have the minister. Um, why why pick his face? Mm -hmm. his, his his because he he probably is not tarnished as tarnished as other people. Plus, we also know that he is Tom Adams' son. Everybody knows Tom Adams, whether you liked him or not, he was recognized to be a brilliant man, very bright. And therefore we are now to, to put all of this into Rodden. And I, you know, I don't have anything against Rodden. I think, I think he's, he's quite a, a nice person as far as I know. Um, but somehow, because I see his face, they're supposed to convince me that all is well with the NIS. No, he is just being put up there as a poster boy. And, you know, Rodden would come to know that if he doesn't know that already. In fact, he might not even have known that they're going to use his picture. Because why, why use his picture when you have a chairman and you have a minister? And in fact, I'm, I'm surprised that with all that is going on, why doesn't the minister of finance speak on these issues and the stewardship of the government with respect to the money of Barbadians. That's really who should be speaking out to clear the air, not, not Rodden. The Minister Rodden probably of Finance. even hear when a lot of that stuff went on. So the Minister of Finance is um, is, is still the um, the Prime Minister. Is still the Prime Minister, yes. And, with, and we have not heard her, well, I have not heard her um, say much about this. There was an article um, in the newspaper, actually funny enough, it was August 12th, um, August 12th, 2022. Actually one year, guys, one year from the date that we are going to be going out. And this is one of the reasons that we need to hit the road on, on um, Saturday, because it's one day, one day um, before we, we go um, on the same day, one day to the same date that we go out. And it says Bar Barbados PM Mayor Motley insists NIS not in crisis. I'm reading it here. It's an article, okay? Prime Minister Mayor Motley says Barbados is no is nowhere near a crisis situation where the NIS is concerned. 
even as she acknowledged that urgent action is needed to avoid reaching that stage. But she said in no uncertain terms, this was a year ago, um, um, Lynette, she said that it was not in crisis, right? We are not in crisis. So what would have happened in Saturday coming would be 12 months since, since uh, the prime minister assured us that this fund was not in crisis. However, the report the, the, from the, 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 um, that came out that Mr. Um, Franklin read, it told us that it was in, in, um, in trouble. So I'm wondering if she hadn't seen it. But I just, just, just an aside, you know, because you were saying the, the Minister of Finance has not yet come out to address the people. Right? But go ahead. Um, um, and, you know, uh, well, I personally haven't, I, 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 don't, I don't know any about any of the mudslinging or any attacks for me. Um, I, I haven't heard of any. I'm probably <laughs> insulated from it. But um, I, I do want to make the point where that is concerned because these things, these, there are certain tactics that are used all of the time. Okay, they're going to um, not not only say derogatory things, but they're going to try to lampoon you, to 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 make make a joke of you. Um, this this has been done repeatedly, as I keep telling you. This is a Caribbean thing where the elites at the top know they have a good deal going by living off of, of poor people. So they have a system which they've been using for decades for anybody at all who speaks out to grind them into the dirt and, and most of all make mock sport at them. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. So when you see that starting to happen, understand that you're getting somewhere, okay? Mm -hmm. So that, that that's what that's why I want to say about that. The, you know, the, the, the tactics are the same, but we're not trying to say we're not trying to make up anything. Anything that we are saying, we are doing our research. We're looking at the legislation. If we don't know, we say that we don't know. So somebody is asking what happened to the Four Seasons Hotel. The last statement I saw on it, they're they're saying that there's an issue with ownership because there, there is, there apparently is some conveyance, um, but there seems to be some issue as to the validity of it. And apparently it's before some court somewhere, I don't know where it is, but at the moment, but, but even very recently, you still hear people talking about this project. You hear government officials talking about this project as though it is something that we still want to be involved in, even, even though the, the project is there, the site is a good site. Um, let private sector from wherever come and invest in it because the track record of us in a project like that doesn't seem to be a good track record. We don't seem to have a good track record at building hotels. So I will hope the NAS funds are not going to be used to try to build any other hotel in Barbados because it seems as though we, we're not, we, we can't get it done. Um, or, and I, I certainly don't think, you know, you, you have a minister of finance, you, you have an economist, and these people assume that they have the knowledge to, to build a big hotel, to know how to do it. It's a joke. Yeah. You know, th there's something I found in, in my research, and I'm, I'm putting it as a question um, to ask the, 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 um, the, the PM um, to tell us wh wh how much was she, because really the government, it was the government's money that was being invested in the mainly was invested in this project um how much did she earn from the um you know from the work that was done because from my my little in investigation i don't know about yours in it but it is being alleged that um the the lawyer on the project um earned over 10 million dollars 
um, and it has been said between her and her father's, um, um, you know, law firm. So the question, I don't know if it's true. So the question is, th these are things I'm saying that if if we have put so much money in it, as uh, as uh, it's our money, as you said, government money is our money that has been put in it. I think that the, the people mm -hmm. need to ask question at least. You can't make statements, but we need to actually ask a question, okay? Um, because we, we're seeing that it seems like a conflict of interest as you went into office and then the, the auditor general is saying, but hold a minute, why did 120 million all of a sudden it's just removed, you know, um, of the books, uh, totally removed of the books? Who did it? It had to come from the Minister of Finance. Somebody had to authorize it for it to be done. And so it caused me as an accountant, mm -hmm. these are the questions that's going in my head, you know, because it's it's too close. The relationships, the conflicts, you know, um, how, did you make money of this project? And, and how much did you make? How much Mr. Avinash made of this project? He's still around. He's still the current um, economic um, advisor to, this, to, 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 to the prime minister, to this government. So the relationships are still there. Sinclair is still there. The three of them still there. What, what is this thing with these three? Sinclair, Avinash, and Motley. These are questions I'm asking. I'm not making statements. I am just wondering as an accountant. It just seems to me that there is such a, a conflict of interest. And in any regular company, the auditor would go in. And when the auditor um, finds that there is a problem, then they are going to really see red flags. And the Auditor General told Barbados that there's a red flag. That's what the Auditor does. The Auditor General went in and saw the $120 million, um, was 124, I think $124 million yeah. that, that was wiped off the books and wanted to know. And in any good company, any, any manager, any owner of any company, the Auditor is saying that they're going to stop what they're doing and go and look at it. So, so I don't know. Did did you know how much um the uh, the, the the lawyer was paid on this project? No, I I have no idea. But I did see an article where Ryan Strawn came out apparently to clear the air to say that the one hundred and twenty four million dollar dollars was not written off um, because the uh, minister of finance, the prime minister was the lawyer at the time. I did see that article written in the newspaper. So apparently once he said that all was well. So, but I mean, I know in other countries for sure, you, well, those maybe are countries that have freedom of information. We, we have a bill, but for some reason that bill, we didn't rush to pass that, that particular bill. Apparently it's in draft, been in draft for the longest time. But, you know, in any other country, you would, well, not any other country, but any other country that holds itself out as um, being run well, according to principles of good governance, you should be able to find out about all the fees that were paid um, out of, of four seasons. Because really it shouldn't be a secret because it's, it's, it's public money. It's public money. It belongs to the taxpayers. So we should know where that money went. You know, um, people, people keep saying that, you know, I, I think, I think Barbadians have been, we've been spoiled for a long time. So we expected these things to work out because you had a government and an opposition. But you could see that with Four Seasons, there was great collaboration um, amongst people who, who were not from the same political party. And two of them seem, one seems to be able to straddle any political party. Um, but but, but, but th this was the coming together of interest between the two political parties. And maybe this is why people have never heard a lot about Four Seasons, because it's a difficult thing for both parties to defend. They, they can't, for either party to defend, it's very difficult for them to, to defend um, um, the use of taxpayers' money in this way, in this project. And then there were fees involved. 
we should know who who was paid what, how much money they got out of it. Because you see, the problem is um, you can have a project that fails if you can see work being done, if you see that work was done. And, you know, then it, because every, every project doesn't succeed. But you can't see, you go out to paradise now, there's, no, there's nothing down there, absolutely nothing down there. So, like, what is it that they, they did with the money? Even if there were advisors, what is it that they were advising on? The hourly rate must have been through the roof in order to, to, to reach those sums of money. So I, I think Barbadians have to question these things more and make it a part of our culture. If it is a part of our culture, then you will have to worry less. You know, people would be wondering, like if you're sitting like me on this program talking, you don't know who's in the audience listening. Um, you don't know. I don't know that I've ever been victimized. I might be, but you say I can't worry about that. You see, I, I am the type of person who can't live in bondage. I have to be able to speak. Um, either, you know, if I, if I were born back in the days of slavery, I probably would be dead because I can't take this. I can't take, I can't take this kind of bondage, taking me for granted, taking money that I work hard for personally. I take it personally. A lot of people don't, they put their money, but I work hard for my money. There's, there's, there's no job that I have ever had. Even if you thought it was a cushy job as a minister or director of international business or when, when I worked at Price Warehouse, whatever, I always work hard. When I have to or not, I always work hard. So every cent that I have, I've worked for. People have given me opportunities, of course, but when given those opportunities, I've worked. So then I can't take it lightly when somebody just take my money and they could just lick it out as they like and they, they get money for doing nothing. I, I don't feel that as fair to me. Correct. You know, Correct. I, I, I see a lot of Barbadians who work hard, even though people turn around and curse them and say they don't like work and that kind of thing. Somebody who was getting up on mornings to catch a six o'clock, seven o'clock bus, to go and stand up all day, to then try to get a bus and don't get one to eight, nine o'clock, have to come home and cook, um, look after children, look after a man or whatever else, then to repeat the same cycle. You telling me that those people don't work hard? I, you know, and it's just probably that they don't have the energy when they finish. All they could do is say, oh, well, you know how it is. What else they can do? Because they're tired. But, tired but, then you, but, then you, but then you have other Barbadians who have the privilege of being able to leave their office and get in a car, put on the air conditioner and drive home. And they're not prepared to stand in the breach for those people who are not able to do anything more. I think they should be embarrassed. Yeah. I really think they should be embarrassed. It, it's real, it's a it's a it's a crying shame. And that's why people like um yourself and Caswell, who will stand up, you know, for the poor people, those who believe who are tired, they work so hard. They're the ones I say I see on the I see I see them. You see these people, they become tired. You know, and so we become a voice for the voiceless. And Mr. Mr. Stewart, I, you know, I know um, it's been said that the bill is passed because I know you had to come on before the, the hearing was completed. But the bill, the bill is now passed, which we knew that once it got to the Senate, that the chances of it being passed, you know, being passed is great because they don't have enough opposition um, to it. Remember? what happened it's the 30 zero situation and they, those senators are all put there by the um the, the government okay um so mr what do we do now um mr um franklin your mic is muted all is not lost um what people don't understand is that when you pass a bill, that France, 
They passed the legislation in France to carry up the pension age to 62 or something like that. 